Hello, everyone. Hey, everybody. I'm Steve. I'm Mark. And this is Smokey Steve and Mark. Yes, it is. Welcome or welcome back. Indeed, it's nice to see you. Oh, it's just, uh, yeah. Yeah, I know it is. This is a, a real break from the week, the day, all of it. Yeah. You know. No, it really is. It is. It's still, it's still, you know, going on. Like, yeah. work is crazy. We're still unpacking. So, God, you know, just to sit down and talk life. to you is so nice. <laughs> yeah. It's, so, we did something really cool, like, we to, did. to get out of that uh, craziness. To mix it up a little. Yeah. little escape. We're doing... A retro dinner date night. <laughs> yes. I don't know. I thought it was it actually was your idea, which shocks me. <laughs> See, I, thanks, I guess. Well, the idea of like a retro dinner date night surprised me that you came up with. Yeah, well, I have, all, I have my moments. Yeah, I think it was a great idea, actually. <laughs> Drop my clipboard. Oh no, then how will we find my our way? notes? I know, right? <laughs> so, we have some recipes for you. It's gonna mm -hmm. be so cool, and it'll be the first time that we're filming here in the new kitchen. In the new kitchen. So we'll see how that goes. We'll see what worked <laughs> and what didn't. How yeah. much of Box Mountain you get an eye of. <laughs> right? Uh, I so. know. But no, everything's going good. We, uh, we're still, you know, we're still unpacked. I don't think it'll ever be done. No, we're going to take shit that we packed and just bring it to the next place. I, I know. Think. I, I'm, I, it's like, it's taking longer than I thought. Well, I think you reach a point like, okay, so you like, you know, you pack up and you move. Yeah. And then you start putting everything away, and then you get a lot of it away, and then you reach that point, and you're like, okay, you sit back a little, and then you kind of stop you doing it. stop. Like, the goal was the one or two boxes open a day. Yeah. And that's how we got to as many as we had. Yeah. Large, medium, small, all of them. Mm -hmm. So, well, and I don't know, we just have to... I don't know. We just have to do it. It's the doing of it. Now that it's like not in the way and we can sit somewhere, it's like it's done. Yeah. I mean, piles of crap all over the place. But as oh long as we have gosh, somewhere to sit. Oh my gosh, I'm so tired, like physically and mentally over the last three weeks. Mm -hmm. Like everything's kind of caught up with us, I think. Yeah. You know? I'm shot out. I know you're shot. My nerves are like, mm -hmm. like, Ah! Yes! <laughs> the oh, tiniest little I thing know. went across my legs, my pen fell on the floor, I screamed. Yeah. You know, it's just not. Yeah. I'm just. My body's wearing out from it. And my mood is chill. Yeah, kind your of. mood's been okay. My mood's been okay. Mm -hmm. But anxiety has been kind of kicking in a little bit because yeah. there's so much happening. It seems like so much could go wrong. And it feels so real. Yeah, and it feels like we kind of deserve bad things to happen to us. <gasps> yeah. We, I know. Time. Shut up. You guys love us and we love you too. But it's. The feeling that I start from a lot of times. I totally can Especially on a to that. shaky day. No, I, I get it. And I think I've shared about it before, too. It's yeah. that feeling of, um, of like, doom coming your way. And yeah. then it's like, well, of course, I deserve bad things. Everything I don't I'd deserve like... anything good to happen. You yeah. know, it's, they're real thoughts and feelings. feelings. You know, they don't translate to action. Like, no. we don't delete the channel every other day. No. You know. Or change the name of the We're channel. We're here for the or... changes. <laughs> yeah. Or we haven't changed it in a while. You know, making decisions uh, without thinking things through because you think that is the answer at the moment and it's going to make you feel better. Like, those yeah. kind of things, you know. No, I so, totally uh, I totally relate to that. And while we absorb all that, yet we cook. Yet we cook. Yet we somehow <laughs> go on. Yes, we do. Y'all got lives of your own. Thanks for watching some of ours. Oh, yeah. And listening to the little bits of how we're doing. So. Yeah. I had my appointment yesterday. I had a, a CAT scan done yesterday. Saw the doctor. Had some lab work done. But I didn't get any results back yet. You know, no. so. But we'll update you next week on all that stuff. You yeah. had an appointment, too. And you have, like, a couple coming up. I have a couple coming up. So, I have a sleep study coming up mm -hmm. in October. The beginning yeah, of October. October. That's the last test I was told they wanted to see if they could put together the twitching and the tremoring and the shaking yeah. and everything. So they're gonna stick all that shit to my head. Yeah. And I'll shave to be nice. <laughs> and um, sleep overnight and see. Because I know I, I wake myself up like thrashing sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's a physical thing and I'm just along for the ride or if I'm having like psychosomatic explosions. Mm -hmm. I'm not yeah, it's sure. hard to determine, you know, what it is. But the one thing that, you know, reigns true through all of this is that, you know, something has to be done. Yeah. Because you, you can't live like this, you no, know. And I, that's what we're in the process of. I reached trying out to today work out. to my primary doctor and I got a note back from a PA that said, Would you be willing to do an over the 
Zoom appointment if you have all these things below. Do I have this? Do I have that? Do I have that for all the email and yeah. logging in and all that shit? Yeah, I wrote security. back, I said, I'll wait if I want to see my doctor. I don't want to see another PA that I've never met. Right. Look at my chart I in the hallway like and then give me directive care from yeah, that. I'd I say it's sloppy. I'd rather wait. And that's what your experience has been up to this point. And I, it's, I, I, like, I have nothing against that if it's just like a regular checkup mm -hmm. or, you know, routine lab work or something like that. Yeah. But, like, in a situation like this, you want to see the doctor who knows you. Yes. And um, it just but... seems so impossible to get an appointment that's not six months out, you know? Didn't you, they offered you an appointment in 2023? Yes, this yeah. is for a new rheumatologist for myself. <laughs> I'll tell you about it next week, but my rheumatologist, uh, well, left, and I'm actually kind of glad, because y'all know I've been wanting to get a second opinion. Yeah. Uh, well, now they're saying that the rheumatologist that was recommended to me, uh, I can't get an appointment until December, December 28th, of 2023. <laughs> so almost 2024. You know, you happen between that? now and then? I know. So I, I went ahead and took the appointment, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm getting another one in the meantime yeah. too. So, but yeah, that it's so frustrating to get the care that you need it. There's so many like hoops you have to jump through and I politics know. you have to do. And it's, it's unfortunate. Now I'm not certain if it's our, uh, group, our plan, or whatever that we have. We have Geisinger, which is and very every, popular in this area. And every facility in this area is a Geisinger. Is a Geisinger facility, facility yeah. So, so just but, some little things that are very frustrating. But just, despite all that, we cook. We do cook. And I think we should cook right now. I'm about ready. Let's like, yeah, let's do it. Let's flip it. So we're having a retro dinner date night tonight. Yes. So we thought it would be fun. We looked back on some like nostalgic retro recipes mm -hmm. from years gone by. A lot of them are like, kind of made a comeback and are pretty they popular. They have. They made the full circle. Yeah. You know, like Chicken a la King is popular. Yeah. Swedish meatballs. I know. Like, right? They're popular yeah. again. As is tuna noodle casserole. Mm -hmm. I've been wanting to share this recipe with you guys for a while and I, I don't I don't know why I haven't before. I, yeah, why not? I've I been know. asking for tuna I casserole. Know. I know he has so Since you're going to get it tonight. You know, so, okay, good. good. <laughs> all right. So, all right. Well, here's my recipe for tuna noodle casserole. Did somebody say tuna noodle casserole? Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. This retro dish is making such a huge comeback over the past few years. In fact, if you go over to recipes.com, you will find over 2,500 recipes for it. Yes, for a single dish. Everybody has their spin on this casserole. And I guess I do too, because I'm super excited to share with you my recipe, okay? So let's get started. Here is what you need. This is your ingredient list, okay? Three cups of shredded white cheddar cheese, four cups of cooked egg noodles, that would be about three cups of dry, about four tablespoons of butter, one half cup each of chopped celery and chopped onion, one tablespoon of minced garlic, two cans of solid white albacore tuna in water, one can of condensed cream of mushroom soup, one and a half cups of half and half, one half cup of sour cream, one cup of frozen peas, a half a cup of shredded Parmesan, and then about one cup of crushed up Ritz crackers. Now for the seasonings, super simple. All we need, salt, pepper, and about a tablespoon or two of chopped fresh parsley. <laughs> Let's get started, okay? In my pot right here, I have our onions and our celery sauteing for about two minutes in two tablespoons of butter over medium high heat. Now to that, we're going to add our minced garlic. Bam, 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 just like that. Give that a little stir and we're gonna let that cook for Oh, about one minute, and then we're going to reduce our heat to low, okay? All right, there we go, there we go, okay. So, now, at this point, we're going to, we already turned our heat down to low, okay? We're going to add both of our cans of tuna, one and two, just like that. In addition to that, 
we're going to add our cream of mushroom soup concentrate. Oh yeah. And uh, tuna noodle casserole was actually one of the very first recipes that actually incorporated a concentrated soup as an ingredient for a recipe. Kind of cool, huh? Interesting. God bless Campbell's, right? Boy, did that take off. All right, so we added that. Next, we're going to add our sour cream. Bam, 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 bam. Okay. And finally, we're going to add our half and half. Just like that. Okay. I'm going to give a little pinch of salt. And of course, some pepper as well. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, it's my Pennsylvania pepper. Love this stuff. Just love it. Okay, now we're going to give that a stir until it's nice and combined. We're going to break up our tuna a little bit there. Okay, and we're going to make like allow this to heat up and uh, keep stirring it pretty frequently until it's nice and heated all the way through and silky and smooth, okay? Ooh, starting to smell tuna-y in here. <laughs> All right, so now at this point, we're going to add our cheese, okay? And uh, the reason why we turned it down to low is, I mean, if this was like really, really hot, you know, you might shock your cheese there, you know, and it may not uh, melt. It might clump. Ever had that happen? Oh, it's loads of fun. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I do recommend definitely shredding your own cheese from the block. You know, pre-shredded cheeses, no matter what type it is, contain cellulose. And that makes it, well, a little more difficult to melt. It's just, it's not preferable, you know. In fact, some of your more inexpensive shredded cheeses, they won't melt at all, you know, because of the amount that's in it. So, and then um, also a quick, you know, substitution. Half and half is just basically half cream, half milk. So uh, you could always substitute uh, evaporated milk if you wanted to, or you could make your own half and half. Um, all right, look, I think we're nice and silky and smooth here. It's all melted. All right, though, so next, let's add some veggies. I add peas and only peas to mine. Now feel free, you can substitute, you can swap and switch. I know people that put like peas, corn, and carrots in it. Some people omit the peas, you know. Uh, entirely up to you. I prefer just peas, okay? And we're gonna add about a cup. There we go there. And then we're gonna add our noodles. Now when you're cooking your noodles, um, here's a little tip for there. Add about a tablespoon of uh, powdered chicken broth to it. Oh yeah, it gives it a nice little uh, additional flavor to the casserole. It really, really makes a difference. Um, you could even boil it in chicken broth if you have it too. So now we're gonna stir this and uh, until it comes back up to temperature, till it's nice and warm, okay? And probably just about a minute or two. Dun, 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 dun. Ooh, nice. Okay, we are nice and heated all through here. Now we're going to add, yep, another little pinch of salt and a little bit uh, additional pepper. And, oh yes, we're going to add some fresh parsley. Oh yes, just like that. I do about a tablespoon and then I save some so we can garnish the top of it later. All right, turn your uh, heat off. Give that a stir. And now we're gonna transfer it into a casserole pan or a nine by 13 baking dish, okay? And then we're gonna take our Parmesan cheese and we're gonna cover the whole top of it, okay? Okay, just like that. Okay, and now we're ready to bake. So we're gonna bake this in a 400 degree oven, covered up for about 20 minutes, okay? Okay, 
canned tuna. Oh, it's an affordable and popular source of protein around the world. I mean, we all have it in our pantries, right? But shopping for canned tuna can be a little head scratching, if you know what I mean. I mean, what's the difference between chunk and solid and light versus white? Oh my goodness. Well, I'm here to try to decode those labels for you so you know what to buy. There are three major brands of tuna sold in the United States. They are Starkist, Chicken of the Sea, and Bumblebee. And these brands make up over 80% of canned tuna consumption in the U.S. The two main categories of canned tuna are white and light. White, which is sometimes labeled albacore, is lighter in color and it comes from a larger fish. It has a firm texture and a mild flavor, whereas light tuna tuna is typically skipjack tuna and it's cheaper than white tuna and has a slightly stronger fish taste. Some tuna is packed in water, other in oils, and others just have nothing but the tuna itself. And recently, seasoned or flavored canned tunas are becoming popular and they can be packed with anything from mustard to garlic and other seasonings. Now both categories of tuna come in two varieties, solid and chunk. Solid tuna has firmer, larger pieces with fewer flakes, while chunk tuna comes in smaller pieces that vary in size. Despite all these differences, all canned tuna have two wonderful attributes. The first being that they're all shelf stable for up to four years, and the other all canned tuna is an excellent source of lean protein, omega-3 fats and acids, and they're high in selenium and other important nutrients. Ah, okay, so you know what? While that's baking, let's make our crumb topping. <laughs> All right, so in this bowl, I have two tablespoons of melted butter, and this is about a cup of crushed up Ritz crackers. <laughs> you know what we're doing. We're just gonna mix that all together, and I guess I'll get all messy because I don't have, it doesn't matter, I can do that. I'm the one eating it and all, you know. <laughs> so we're gonna toss that until our crumbs are nice and evenly coated. And then we're just gonna set this aside because we're gonna add this uh, after the 20 minutes are up, okay? Here we go, okay. That was 20 minutes. <laughs> oh, it's so exciting, it just is. Oh my gosh, all right. So now we put our Ritz cracker topping on it. Ooh, I'm so excited to do this. This is the first time I've done it. Um, like I said, my mom always used uh, Ritz crackers on top of it. And I know some people that do use, um, uh, gosh, potato chips. I always use breadcrumbs, you know, uh, with a little bit of garlic on it and some seasonings, you know. But this will turn out good. This dish really does bring me to my childhood. My mom would make this quite often, um, often enough anyway. And it does. Every time I make it, it brings me right back to my childhood. Talk about a retro dish to make. This is definitely one of them. Okay, so there we go. All of our topping is on there, nice and even. All right, so now all we do is put this back in the oven, uncovered, until the top gets nice and brown. Anywhere from, we'll say, seven to ten minutes okay just check it and uh take it out when it's uh brown enough to your liking okay all right a few moments later okay here we go oh it looks good <laughs> all right oh my gosh i wish you could smell this you can smell like you can smell the tuna but you can also sell smell the the buttery crackers and you can smell the cheese oh it's so great and finally just to you know finish things off a little i'm gonna put some fresh parsley right on top of it you know just for appearances sake <laughs> all right there we go all right there you have it our retro tuna noodle casserole i hope you give my recipe a try i don't know i think you might like it <laughs> Bye.
Bravo. Yeah, you get two new new accounts. I do. I haven't had it in forever. Not even two and a helper. I think I only made it for you once. That would be accurate. And it was like quite some time ago. It was. It was before like Christmas villages. It was before everything. (laughs) And it was. uh, It was very. It was a very. It's very good. Oh, thank you. It was very good. So I'm excited for being able to share this little bit. Um, Mm -hmm. because yours is better than mine. Oh, and I cook too. You do. I do. I do. I do. Are you going to cook tonight? Yes, I'm going to cook tonight. Oh, are you? Well, loosely you can call it cooking. Okay. But yeah. But we need a dessert. Yeah. Is that what you're doing? I'm doing a dessert. Ooh. Very few ingredients. A throwback from when I was a kid. Whip and chill. Whip and chill. Whip and chill. Hey, guys. So while we're talking retro, let me throw you back to a retro of my own. Um, I was growing up, my mother had a handful of recipes. Um, and this was something she would serve us as a kid. We searched around and looked for the name of it, and apparently it was called Whip and Chill. Um, the t- ingredients were a little different than what I grew up with, but it's a, basically a, like, orange parfait-y, uh, moussey kind of thing. So, just to get you started, here's all the ingredients. So, we have Jello. I'm using orange. You can match fruits and things with, with elves. Um, six ounce, it's the big one. We have a can of mandarin oranges, which we will drain and mix in. Hot water, cold water, if you've never made jello, cup of hot, cup of cold. Um, we're also going to be using, for the creamy factor, Dream Whip. Now, Dream Whip is another throwback, <laughs> I believe. This was the only product my mother would use. No, no cool whip in a tub, nothing. She would make this. It's a throwback, but it produces a whip product. The directions are pretty simple. Envelope of this Dream Whip whipped topping mix, half a cup of cold water, and then some vanilla if you want. So, and then, you know, if you want to make cute garnishes, you have an orange. All right, so clearing the decks. First things first is Jello. Jello. Six ounces. I can't read. There's so many things that throw me back to, like, retro-y and growing up. My mom and dad were, like... Early 70s was when their family started, and my mother was very much a convenience cook, so this is a convenience sweet to go with it. Before I disturb myself there. Jello. Okay, first thing with gelatin, hot water. One cup of hot water. We're essentially just making jello first, and then we're going to take it from there. So, one cup of hot. And you're going to stir this in until the gelatin dissolves, until it's not too murky and it's not gritty on the um, spoon anymore. So we'll give this a minute, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so that's our hot water. You give this stir until it dissolves. The gelatin will melt. It'll take a couple of minutes, so don't hang in there. One cup of cold water. And now we are going to mix this up till it's all... All combined, you know, all the gelatin is gotten with the hot water, it's melted, and then this gives us a little more cool down. Now, if you have home re- uh, homemaker secrets for how to speed up jello and make it happen faster, I'm all ears. One that I've used before, which is helpful, is have a flat pan. You could even use a cookie sheet. And we will pour onto some surface that'll make it thin so it doesn't have to gel too, too, too much. And this we will take, put in the fridge for about an hour. All right, so let's get a little creamy. So Dream Whip, again, is a product I haven't used since. I've seen my mother use this. There's recipes on it. It's like old school. They have the Dream Pie recipe on the back. So this comes in powder. It's not dairy creamer, but we're adding milk. Um, So you one packet of the Dream Whip goes with half a cup of milk any kind. Holes good. It'll take skim even. So I don't know about nut milks or rice milks because they're not from cows. So I don't know how they, I don't know how that'll work out. But now we have beater. Hand mixer. You got a whisk and you got good arms. Go for that. Incorporate it on low for a minute. Then turn it up to high for about four minutes. So I'm gonna get into this and then we will see when the jello comes out and it all comes together. I think we are just about there. 
Now at this point we do have an option. You could toss in a little vanilla if you'd like. Don't have to. I happen to have homemade on hand. Thank you, Mama. And we're gonna use a little bit, like a half teaspoon or so. Nothing flashy. And that'll mix in like in a hot second. And we're gonna be beating the crap out of this later. So put this back in the fridge to wait while the jello's in there. Like I said, when the jello, we put it in a shallow pan and give it like an hour. This won't deflate if it does whip it up um, until the jello's done. And the next time you see us, we will be combining this nectar of the gods. Mm. Okay, so we have orange jello. And again, you want to shave some time off, put it in a shallow, shallow dish of some kind, plate, just so it doesn't have to get all the way down into a deep center to set up. So it looks like little jewels spread across. See, as I struggle with jello. Okay. Orange jello. Now we have our dream whip, which has been chilling for the duration of the jello setting. We're at about an hour here. We whip again. Aha! Wanna lick the beater? Okay, so this is our mixture. Very nice, very nice. And you'll see it's light, fluffy, gelatinous. And when you pull this again, it'll set up even a little more tight too. So you can have it now as a spoonable or you can put it in the fridge and be a little more we're like that. Other options, we have our mandarin oranges. You can pulverize these with the mixer, but we are just gonna fold them in now after the fat. That's about does it. So we have a bowl, we're gonna serve it in. I had a, a little helper make some orange slices for the edges. So I'm gonna set it up, put it in here, and then I'll bring you back for the final product. And you'll see in one second, okay. Throwback Whip and Chill using Dream Whip powdered creamer, orange jello, some mandarin oranges. It doesn't get much more of a throwback than that, at least not for me. So, I won't stick my finger in it, but I'll let you know how it turned out anyway. Bad. I'm impressed. I'm impressed I'm too. I'm super impressed. Very surprised. You did a good job. I yes. love that. I love the angle of the, the table too and everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really, really nice. Yeah. And oh, and it was so too. good. I tasted it. Oh my gosh. I forgot. If you like creamsicles, and I hate creamsicles, but I like this. Yeah. If you do like orange and cream, it's a good... It's a good thing. Mm -hmm. And if it's not, use strawberry. Yeah, you could use all different use flavors, any right? Flavor yeah. Jello, you can make flow. What a throwback. That, like jello molds. And I know. Like, Remember when everybody was encasing stuff and the, uh, yeah, what they just call it? Uh, layout, like your it's like onions and walnuts oh, and cashews yeah. and like oh. raisins and all that other weird sh and, and then it's like, salad suspended in line jello. Too? With the marshmallows and the, I hated it. Oh, yes, I, I, like, I didn't like that. At I all. didn't grow up like that. It but this is good. Time. I forgot. So. I forgot how good this is. Mm -hmm. Oh man, we have dinner dessert. Now we need something to watch. Oh. How about a retro rewind?
is, hey, this time on Retro Rewind, we're going all the way back to the 50s and the 60s to take a look at some beloved and nostalgic foods. Fondue was one of the biggest food trends of the 1960s. Oh, once Americans got a taste of it, fondue caught on like wildfire, as did variations like the chocolate fondue. Now along with fondue, Swedish meatballs was the other dish that no worthwhile 60s party went without. These small meatballs served in gravy was a novel change from the usual Italian style meatballs. By the 1960s, the space age was in full bloom and so was its commercialization. Freeze dried astronaut ice cream first hit the market in the 1960s and immediately became a must try for every kid. Quake was introduced in 1965, right alongside of Quisp! Oh yes, and they were identical except for their shape. Quisp looked like a little flying saucer, whereas Quake looked like a little gear with a hole in the middle. And Quisp, well, his mascot was a friendly little alien, while Quake was a burly miner. <laughs> now, Quisp quickly outsold Quake from the beginning and still can be found on store shelves today. Quake with its earthquake power, well, it was officially discontinued in 1973. No special occasion of the 50s or the 60s was complete without something made from a Jell-O brand product. From gelatin to gelatin molds to instant puddings to pudding pies, it became the basis for many home cooks creativity and the star of the show for many church basement get-togethers. In 1966, a woman named Ella Helfrich won the Pillsbury Bake Off with a recipe for a chocolate walnut cake that had a mysterious fudgy center, the Tunnel of Fudge Cake. Not only did this recipe take off, but it also led to sales of an estimated 60 million bun pans across the country. We couldn't leave out chicken in a biscuit. This snack cracker was first released by Nabisco in 1964, and even though it's still produced, it's not nearly as popular as it was in its 1960s heyday. It's chicken flavored and actually contains dehydrated cooked chicken. Now we just scratched the surface of the foods from the 1950s and 60s. And beverages? Well, the first diet soda was introduced in 1958 by the Royal Crown Cola Company. Diet Right Cola. And then quickly after, in 1963, the Coca-Cola Company introduced their own diet soda. Tab! <laughs> I know you remember Tab. Well, like fashion, food falls in and out of style and back in again, just like many of the foods we talked about today. Some of them are as popular now as they were way back then. Oh, I'm so much yeah. fun tonight. Oh, we hope you enjoyed our little retro dinner date night tonight. As much as we did. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Well, thank you all for coming. Yeah. Please do uh, like, share, subscribe. Uh, you can follow us on uh, Instagram, mm -hmm. Smokey Steve and Mark, on Facebook, Smokey Steve Space and Mark. Um, email address, contact info, all that's below as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you again, and I will be seeing you tomorrow. Oh, yeah. For one Miss Foodie Beauty. Whoopie talk, y'all. And then we'll be back Sunday for our regular live stream at 6 mm -hmm. o'clock. And then I'll see you Monday for Mondays with Mark. Boy, that week went fast. It certainly did. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much again for spending your time with us. Mm -hmm. And remember, everybody, above all else, stay positive. Ciao, everybody. Bye. <laughs>